Welcome back to Force City Cageline, this is Ed. Today we're going to be talking about Ethereum Therapeutics, going with the ticker ITRM. Make sure to drop a like to this video, help this channel grow, subscribe, and leave your cations on. Let's jump right into this one. I covered this video or this topic before the ITRM one, but this one will be a wholesome video that you don't need to watch my previous ones. But if you'd like to do so, it's in the description below. So this one here, they just recently made an update. So just quickly going on, they are therapeutics with active pipeline for products such as selenium and uh, su sorry, saplenum and other things such as UT UTI infections. And I'm going to go through that in a second. So. Uh, Silipinum is an oral IV penum antibiotic license from Pfizer. Oral silipinum achieved the primary endpoint of statistical superiority, a leading treatment for UTI in the US in patients with uh, cunulin non-susceptible infections in a recent phase 3 trial. And then the next part, and I'll show you, by the way, the big milestones quickly. Immediately addressable potential US market of 6.5 million infections uh, annually due to non-susceptible pathogens, around 22 million total UTI infections per year in the broad US market alone. And in January 2021, the NDA acceptable for review for oral silipinum to the treatment of uncomplicated urinary tract infections, UTI, in patients uh, with a non-susceptible pathogen. The PDUFA date of July 25th 2021 with a planned advisory committee likely in the quarter two of 2021 which we're on the cusp of next challenges faced by recent antibiotic launches iv only antibiotics hospital focused unproven and challenging antibiotics classes and fierce competition moving on towards the oral silipinum differentiation this is an oral antibiotic compared to iv community focused versus on hospital focused proven and trusted penem class compared to unproven and challenging antibiotic classes and dominant share of voice. So that's actually pretty good. And in terms of here's just a quick comparison between uh, oral and oral and IV and IV only. And you get to see it's a there's a high unmet need. A little bit of a quick overview on the heat map here for 2017 patients uh, that would by zip code that would benefit out of this one. Next is the UTI patients, some statistical data that are covered. But this one here, the pipeline, this is what I'm looking for. Completed phase three study designs. Over 3,700 patients enrolled in over 1,800 patients treated with silipinum. FDA and EMA primary endpoint that occurs at 12 days. And then the, that's for the UTI, uh, CUTI. This one is cured 21 days and EMA not supportive of uh, this, of, sorry, of uh, intrapenum. The clinical and microbiological success though. CIAI, this one is cure at day 28 for clinical success and cure at day 21 for EMA clinical success. And moving on, so covered a lot of these. Yep, this is where we're looking for here. So Lipinum, the UTI, this one here, as you can get to see in the first half of 2021, you got the NDA accepted and then the potential advisory committee, second half of 2021, potential NDA approval. And this is a lot of what the people are looking at. They're looking at that potential NDA approval. And when that's, once this exact milestone hits, that is where things become a lot better for this company. I've covered this one before. Um, oh, of course here, the financial overview. So this is back in September and I'll cover this one a little bit later in terms of the video, in terms of their earnings. So the cash and cash equivalent was 8.6 million as of September, 2020. In terms of uh, loans and including PPP loans, you're 9.8 million, uh, around 6.5 exchangeable senior uh, sub subordinates notes due to 2025, that's 16.2 million and ordinary shares outstanding at February 12, 2021, that's around 176 million. So moving on next, in terms of quarter two, 2021, what's coming up is the advisory committee. So that's coming up soon and the potential NDA approval quarter three, 2021, the potential FDA approval for the NDA. So that's actually pretty amazing. Next, I already covered this kind of pipeline. So we don't, we don't need to recover this one again. And some of the latest news, because at that point, we're able to see, well, what is the next massive uh, indicators or milestones that we should be looking for? So on March 12th, you're going to have a conference call for the fourth quarter and a full year of 2020 financial results. And it's going to be, it's going to have a conference call at 8 30 AM on March 12th. So that's exciting because what we're going to be seeing there is a bit of potential uh, about what their future is going to be in terms of financially stable and whether they need to raise more money or not. And some of the other news, so I'm going to go a little bit back and 
trying to give you a better picture just in case this is the first time ever you've been watching this series of videos so uh, they have a conference coming up on march 9th 2021 at 7 a.m so that's actually exciting as well if you're interested to know a bit more about it 35 million dollars in terms of registered direct offering that was on february 9th uh 10 million there on february 3rd so uh, i'm gonna start adding them up 35 10 that's 45 announcing off uh, uh 40 million there so that's actually an increase so we're gonna go with 75 and then interim therapeutics announces collaboration with Eversa to support oral solipinum launch that's actually also exciting there it's just it helps it with the actual launch and it shows that there are very focused on making sure that this launch would be very successful fda filing we already know that uh, this was a way old conference back in january 06 transition to michael doon md to strategic advisor and member board of directors covered that news before nothing significant there um, they announced a U.S. patent application based on favorable written opinion on International Search 30. Uh, covered That was all the way back in December and it's already priced in. Submits the new drug application. We've already seen the proceeds of that third quarter previously. Uh, pricing of $17.5 million upside public offering. So this is probably the only one in terms of the offerings that will go ahead and show up in our balance sheet for quarter four. So in terms of the quarter four here on Yahoo News, we get to see this one market cap is currently sitting at 23 million. In terms of statistics, we don't have the price over books or price over sales, so we're not able to compare those. But in terms of financials, we're able to see at least the annual financials and then the quarterly financials. Annual ones, you're looking at almost 100 million in loss in terms of net income. Balance sheet, what you're seeing is that year over year and by the way when we go to quarterly it's going to give us a better picture the total current assets sit somewhere probably on average around 50 million and their total assets just generally would probably be around the same i would say 50 60 million total current liabilities you get to see that yes they picked up some liabilities in 2019 around 40 uh, million in terms of total current liabilities but they raised a lot of money so we need to compare it in terms of the last quarters in the last quarter their current the current total assets was around 26 million their total liabilities was 82 so you see a massive increase of total liability now if we were talking into quarter 1 2021 they have a lot of money that they raised that they can really substantially uh, decrease that total liability but if we're talking about quarter 4 2020 you're probably going to see that total liability go down to 70. moving on towards the quarterly revenue what we get to see is that the net income here has been somewhat stable around negative 12 million so that is probably what you're going to be expecting it's negative 12 million and it seems that they've actually hit that to be continuous there in terms of the last basic uh, EBI or sorry basic EPS you're seeing that it, there's actually been an improvement there and this is reflected by uh, what the estimated is to be and then if we were to look into the balance sheet in terms of the last quarter as it did say uh, the total current liabilities you're looking somewhere around 82 and that is not actually reflected in terms of the earnings in terms of their total nets but last time they actually missed their earnings but generally speaking they either meet or beat it uh, we got three beatings and one missing in terms of the last four quarters. The current estimated one, con uh, the cons consensus for EPS is around negative 0.19. Are they going to meet it? There is a good chance, uh, but just be careful with that. In terms of their current earnings, you get to see that the earnings have been decreasing year over year. But when we're looking into qu quarters, they're actually been improving uh, for the last few quarters, uh, even though in terms of the last two quarters, the difference wasn't as much as if we were to compare it between quarter 4 2019 and quarter 3 2019. But the good thing is the year over year of quarter 4 2019 to quarter uh, 4 2020 will see an improvement because the, the total earnings there was negative 23. The last quarter earning was around negative 12. So you're probably going to see them come back and say, well, we had almost 100% year over year improvement in terms of their earnings. So um, that is something to consider there. And when we're talking about improvement, we're talking about cutting off losses, really. They're not there as a net positive company yet. Moving on now towards institutional buyers. What we get to see here is things look a little bit stable. Uh, New and Leaf Ventures did get around 450% of the entire company back in uh, February. Um, can't believe it's already March and you get to see some institutional buyers in February. So there was a lot of activity 2021. All these are 13 G's that just ended up having or direct investments uh, that ended up happening in 2021. 
institutional buyers seem to be a little bit mixed. Morgan Stanley, for instance, has a position recently. Royal Bank of Canada liquidated the entire position. And now towards the technical analysis. If you haven't done so, please make sure to subscribe and leave notifications on. It helps my channel a lot. And if you'd like to join our Discord server, it's totally free. You can ask me for any clarifications or questions that you might have. I'm a lot likely to answer over there than in the comments just because YouTube isn't really friendly for me, at least from my side, in terms of towards the comments. Now, in terms of the moving averages on the one-week perspective, 10 SMA is above 30 EMA, and that's a bullish thing. Your trading action zone, where positive reversals are likely, is between $1.55 and $1.38. Currently, the price point is also above the 50 SMA, above the $1.50, and that's a bullish thing. Now, in terms of the ADX, you're seeing that, well, we still haven't seen that breakdown yet. William percent R is at the lowest it's been, so that indicates an oversold trend. MACD looks like it's going to attempt a negative reversal, but momentum is still positive. Now, in terms of a one day perspective, what we get to see here is that the 10 SMA, yes, is above the 30 EMA. The price point is uh, 50 SMA is above the 200 SMA, but it's really clenching through. Above $1.71, you get back to be bullish. MACD here is saying, well, with this bullish kicker, what we're actually seeing is that this MACD might be attempting towards a positive reversal. The momentum has actually been climbing up very slowly and sneaking up, and willing percent R is at the oversold section. In terms of an ADX, what we get to see is that it says, hey, there might be actually a potential new trend, a new bullish trend forming. In terms of a two hour, you get to see this reversal has already started. Above the $1.49, you are out of the bearish trading action zone. Above $1.59, you're fully bullish, and that's amazing. In terms of the MACD, you're getting to see that, well, actually, you are in the midst of a breakout. So from $1.15 to $1.50, that is a definition of uh, another pop or another uh, breakout there. And it, we're really going to see that in terms of the moving averages and the stochastic fast and stochastic slow. In terms of momentum, you're getting to see it's positive. So things are starting to look a lot better. In terms of the moving average band, this one is expected to trade at 209 at the top. $1.90 in the middle and $1.71 in the bottom. The current Bollinger Bands is $2.61 at the top and $1.19 in the bottom. And currently it's very close to that Bollinger Bands and you expect for it to bounce from there. In terms of the Stochastic Fast and Stochastic Slower, both telling you that, hey, there might actually be a reversal here. So it might be actually a good time to buy here or get a starter, given it's a high risk, but it might be worth it. In terms of Fibonacci retracements, if I was to take this very long overview, you get to see the current, the first resistance over there is 341. But if we were to lower that expectations down and zoom in a little bit down towards, let's say, uh, the last six months and going ahead with 45 as uh, the bottom, three as the top, and you're seeing here, this starts to look a little bit better. Current Fibonacci support would be at 141, following by 105 and 45 cents at the bottom. Current resistances are $1.73, 203, 246, and 3 bucks. And we can go ahead and start drawing price line actions. Current support sits at let's say somewhere around $1.46. Below there, you're looking at $1.34. Below there, $1.14, $1.06, 95 cents, 80 cents, and 65 cents. Current resistances are looking at $1.51, $1.60. Dollar eighty two, two dollars, two fourteen, and two thirty seven. Comes to the question to Ed, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, there was this really nice trend line that I've been drawing for a while, and that seems to be a bit broken there. And so things were looking very interesting. And my question is, well, this kind of trend line might actually be your current for, uh, start ring of your resistance. Will it actually jump back above? And if it does, $1.64, $1.65 would be a really interesting point to see cross. And I want to see it hold that price point. And I wanted to see it above the $1.61. Currently, things are shaking. And I'm not sure whether this is just an anomaly with people just buying a dip and maybe a bull trap. But I think... With the FDA coming up in the second half of 2021 and uh, the earnings coming up, we might actually see a little bit of an increase there, but it's getting a lot of high risk. So it has a lot of potential for you in the future. Earnings might be beat, like it might beat it just because it usually does beat it. Things are looking a lot better, but I'm interested to see even quarter one 2021 rather than fourth quarter 2020. Uh, and I think that they will give us a bit more insight in terms of the earnings and might increase the price point here higher. Again, it's very high risk. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like it. Have a wonderful day.